Steve, good morning. How are you? I'm terrific, Molly. It's baseball again. I mean, we're pretty close to starting this and uh, watching the World Baseball Classic and watching that uh, United States team has been pretty remarkable. I mean, I look at that lineup and think about what that specific lineup would do if they were actually a team that went into the season in whatever division uh, you pick. There's some pretty good ball players, and that, that offensive lineup is outstanding. Yeah, and it's it's been fun to see Tim Anderson kind of get some accolades, right? There've been some uh, some bouquets thrown his way by some of his teammates and and uh, and and the coach, and it's just been, you know, it's the kind of thing that that hopefully will fuel him even more when he gets back to the Sox. Well, those of us who've seen him from the beginning realize just how good a player he can be. Now, injuries have curtailed. Uh, a few different seasons for him, but uh, right now it looks like he's ready to go, maybe rededicated himself to a number of things, but he's a wonderful hitter. And when he starts to realize, and I think I've seen a little bit of progression in this in the World Baseball Classic, when he realizes he can drive in runs by hitting the ball to right and right center field, which is pretty much what he does naturally, I think he's going to be even more of a factor offensively because uh, the last few years, what we saw is he could hit the ball to right and right center consistently, come away with a base hit, won a batting title, no problem with that. But then he would come up in a situation where he had to drive home a run and he would pull the ball. And that's really not him because more times than not, he would ground to the left side. The run wouldn't score. That's uh, that's not the way to uh, to pad your stats. It's also not the way to help the ball club. But he's good enough and just a wonderful enough athlete to be able to make the adjustment. It's a small adjustment. Just do what you normally do. Just don't press to drive in the run because you're going to have some guys behind you that can drive in that run if you don't. So just relax, and I think he's going to do that. But I'm looking for a big year from Anderson. He's also adjusted and embraced playing second base because it is for the good of Team USA. And I wonder, Steve, could you make an argument that if it's in the best interest of the White Sox for him to play second base at Elvis Andrews, to play shortstop, why wouldn't he be willing to do the same thing with the Sox? Well, first of all, I, I don't know if uh, if it's in his best interest. I do know that the number one prospect in this organization is a shortstop, Colson Montgomery. And so uh, it might help to keep Tim around longer if when Colson is ready to go, Tim would shift over to second base. But right now I think we're a long way from that. Montgomery is still a very young very young player. He's going to be a very good player, but right now they want to see more minor league at bats. I don't think you can rule anything out as far as Tim is concerned. You know, early in his career, there were those who thought, and this was pre Luis Robert, uh, who thought his best position was center field and maybe he would move there, but he stayed at shortstop trying to round out his game. And if he just makes the routine plays, he's going to make the spectacular plays anyway because he's that athletic. If he just makes the routine plays, then he's going to be a, a whale of a shortstop on both the offense and the defense. He's got a strong enough arm. Every part of his game is, is good enough to be not only a, a major leaguer but a major league star. And it looks to me like uh, maybe with some maturity and a different perspective on things, uh, I, I just think he's poised to put it all together this year. Uh, Steve, we, we, um, we saw yesterday uh, Mankata have this um... – this collision, uh, I, I don't know if you've heard any update. I guess initially they said that it was uh, ribs and a concussion, but the concussion apparently is not part of this now. So anyone who made a wager about when he'd return, I think they're off the hook. <laughs> but uh, but have you heard anything about that? I haven't. Okay. Um, hopefully he's going to be okay because he's a starting third baseman and with all right. of his offensive woes at times last year. Uh, he played very solid defense. And as we know, that has been a problem for the Sox of recent vintage. So if he's there and Anderson on the left side, I think it'll be a strong left side. So hopefully Yuan is playing because uh, one of the things is I, I think with the lineup, the way it's constructed this year, I think they'll be able to score some runs. I look for a, a healthy Eloy and a healthy Luis Robert. And if that's the case, you factor in some guys who are swinging it real well. I mean, Grandal is swinging it real well in the spring. Uh, Colas is swinging it real well in the spring. No guarantee that he's going to make the team, but it gives us uh, a little balance from the left side, something that uh, that hasn't happened. 
and I look uh, I look forward to Andrew Vaughn playing every day at his natural position where he doesn't have to worry about being out of position uh, in one of the corner outfields because that's that's not where he should be playing. He's playing where he should be playing at first. Steve, based on your observations this spring, what has been the biggest impact of Pedro Grafal? Well, I think a couple of different things, and I think it goes beyond Pedro. I have no doubt that Pedro is going to be a very good manager because he's got a good combination of people like him and people respect him. He's been around a long time. But I think the coaching staff, as it was reassembled, is going to be one of the strong points of this team. I love Charlie Montoyo. I think he's just terrific. I thought he did a great job with Toronto. I don't know exactly what went wrong there, but uh, Charlie tells me he's going to tell me during the season when we have a little more time to talk about it. But, you know, along with Eddie Rodriguez, uh, uh, there's, there's a number of new coaches that appear to me to be ready to take on a challenge that is the White Sox because – there's no doubt that you can't sugarcoat it. It was a very disappointing year last year. 81 and 81 for a team with this talent was not where this team wanted to be. And so because of that, you have a, a spring where for most of the guys who were there, they were able to concentrate on fundamentals. And that's one of the things And Pedro said something really interesting, I think, which, which typifies the kind of manager Pedro is going to be when everybody talked about uh, Oscar Colas making a fine catch in center field and they wanted Pedro to comment on the catch, and he said, I'm not as concerned with that catch as I am with him missing the cutoff man after he made that catch. So with that kind of attention to detail, and that's one of the things that everybody talks about this year, this whole coaching staff with an attention to detail, I think they're on the right track, and and I think that, uh, look, it's essential to get off to a good start. Hopefully that happens. But I I think Pedro and the rest of his staff are going to do real well this year. Steve, um, you know, we have not seen Andrew Vaughn in eight days, and he's going to miss a few more because of a lower back issue, according to the White Sox. I'm just curious. We had talked to you about a comparison with Steve Garvey, that that's kind of hitter he's going to be. Um, You worry that if he has a lower back issue, there's going to be some of that Anthony Rizzo there, where you never know when that thing's going to seize up on him and how you're going to – uh, be careful with him. Given the whole Moncada thing and now this, do you think Berger is more likely than not to make the roster, or is he still fighting an uphill battle? Well, I think he's still fighting to make the roster, and, and certainly he would be a terrific insurance policy for you. We know he can hit. We know he can hit the ball a long way and hit some home runs. Uh, I don't know about the configuration of the roster, and exactly who's going to be there when the smoke clears, because you don't really know. And there are injuries to to contend with. Uh, So far, everybody that I talked to was not too worried about Andrew Vaughn's injury, and hopefully that's the case. As far as Moncada is concerned, that's yet to be determined. But there is uh, a lot of competition for the last few spots. I think it's a pleasure to see uh, the kind of uh, pitching staff that we've put together. I like the starting rotation a lot. I think the bullpen will smooth out. It's a huge hole with Liam Hendricks gone, so that becomes problematic, and there's not going to be one closer. There's going to be – I I hesitate to say closer by committee, but it's going to be closer by situation. And it depends on when the meat of the lineup is coming up. You might put the guy that you view as your closer into the eighth inning. So as far as the health of everyone else, uh, one of the things you can say that is a plus is that Andrew got nicked up during the course of the spring where he still had enough days to come back and and be ready to go. I don't know the medical situation of either of those guys, but I do realize that uh, there is still a little time. There's another uh, week and a half or so to go. So uh, there's plenty of time for these guys to heal, and hopefully they'll be able to do that so that you can have the full complement of your players against a very strong Houston team who, by the way, as you know, just lost El Tuve. How do you feel about the catching situation, given it's the same one that they were dealing with a year ago, and we th- thought maybe in the offseason they would address it, and yet the only way that it's been addressed is expecting Yasmani Grandal to be healthier? Well, he's going to be healthier. The legs are pretty good. I don't know how long they will last in that in that regard because catching is really tough on you, especially if you have old knees. Uh, I can relate to old knees, by the way, so I know how diff- difficult it is. But uh, – Look, that number one catcher that everybody would like to have, you know, that that Will Smith kind of guy, that Adley Rutschman kind of guy, he's just not out there to acquire. 
So there's nothing saying that they can't make some sort of move because as we get down closer to the season, there's going to be a lot of catchers that are going to be let go because of roster constraints. So they'll be looking at somebody, and if they believe it's an upgrade, uh, then they'll go after them. Uh, Sebi Zavala has done a nice job. I think he's improved a, a little bit, especially on blocking low pitches. He also was swinging the bat pretty well, and I do like the way that Grandal is swinging it. Um, Yasmani probably will never be known as a defensive catcher, so he's got to contribute offensively. But so far, he's not looking all that badly in spring training catching. Now, we've seen this before. We'll see what happens. But, you know, the guy you're asking for, that number one guy, uh, he doesn't exist to be acquired. Um, when you look at their pitching, you like their starting rotation. There are questions about mm. the depth of that group, um, and I'm just curious, what have you seen from the, from the possibility of getting a, a sixth guy, seventh guy? I'm just saying who who's pretty good or who could be a surprise. It seems like they are uh, – limited in that area, and then you look at, like, Crochet coming back. Have you seen him? How quickly is that possible? Uh, could they get help from unexpected places? Well, I'm not sure they need any help, uh, but every team, Ali, is saying the same thing that you're saying. Boy, we could use a little more depth in the starting rotation. Yeah. I remember uh, when I got to Baltimore as their first free agent acquisition ever, uh, the general manager at the time, a guy by the name of Hank Peters, said, here in Baltimore, when we believe we have enough pitching, when we are certain that we have enough depth, when there is no doubt that our starting pitching is strong enough, we add another pitcher. And that was the philosophy that a lot of teams have. You can never have enough depth. But Davis Martin is a good insurance policy. We saw him last year. We saw him throw very well. He would be the sixth guy, you know, barring somebody else coming over. But, again, you know, that that pitcher that uh, – that, steps into the starting rotation of a major league team, he's not going to be out there to be acquired unless you really want to give up one of your uh, tremendous young talents that you might have either in the majors or the minor leagues, and the Sox aren't ready to do that. They've spent a lot of time seeing some of these young guys try to develop. I don't think they want to move them at this point. But you've got some time to make deals if, in fact, you have one or two of your starters go down. And right now, that's not the case. Right now, you got five healthy guys and Davis Martin. And maybe there's a couple of other guys that they really like out there. So I, I think the pitching is going to be fine. The only thing that they have to identify is that man who can come in and shut down the opposition late. Uh, we're not going to find another Liam Hendricks out there uh, for you know to be acquired. Because if you did, then the Mets would go get him. Uh, the Mets have the financial resources to get anybody they want to, and it's going to be difficult for them to be able to acquire uh, that that back-end closer to take Diaz's spot. So uh, everybody is looking for approximately the same thing, and uh, there's only so many guys to go around. Steve, you sounded a little reluctant to say Oscar Colas would be the opening day right fielder. You're there, we're not, but he looks really good from from this uh, vantage point. What would prevent him from being in the lineup on opening day? Well, perhaps somebody uh, that can that can beat him out, uh, even on a short-term basis, because with Oscar, you want him to get four and five at-bats a game. You can't put him on the roster and then not play him. If the Sox believe that he's good enough for four or five at-bats a day, then he will make the roster. What they're working on is not swinging the bat because everybody believes Colas can swing the bat. What they're working on is the other aspects of his game, the defense, the base running, the intangibles that everybody talks about that make a complete player. And right now the question is, do they think that he's far enough advanced after a minimum of time in the minor leagues to be able to both swing the bat and play some defense and know how to run the bases. If if the brass is confident that that's the guy that Oscar Colas is going to be, I think he gives a new dimension to this offense because you got to love his bat. He can hit to all fields. He makes good, solid contact. He's enormously strong. And, you know, you got a guy who's still a very young player, despite the fact, you know, we see some 24-year-olds who are well-rounded, who understand every aspect of the game, 
and who have had a wealth of experience in the minor leagues. Oscar is not one of those guys. He's a guy with enormous talent who has a limited amount of time in the minor leagues that just very well could be ready. So, again, if he does make the team, he's your starting right fielder. If he doesn't make the team, who's your starting right fielder? Do you have, I mean, does that mean – I just look at it. Ben Attendee is your left fielder. Luis Robert mm-hmm. – um, you know, Aloy has played out there, but you're not going to start him at right field. Billy Hamilton, could he make the team? Mm. I don't know. Would Marisnik then be a guy start the rookie? Play? I agree. Well, don't don't forget, you do have Gavin Sheets, who has got a pretty good left-handed bat and was a bit better than Andrew Vaughn in the outfield. And I think uh, I think Gavin got better as the year moved along defensively. So there's a number of opportunities for guys if Oscar doesn't make the team. Uh, right now, if I were a, a wagering man, uh, I would say that uh, Oscar is going to make the team.